This show, Runes That Bind Us, is essentially about um, me accidentally discovering how much sort of buried queer history there was to be found in Norse mythology and um, becoming sort of curious about that and wanting to explore it a little more visually. But um, one of the main things I found that I wasn't expecting when I started looking into it um, was just how much association uh, the Vikings and their mythology has between homosexuality or queerness and magic and magic practitioners. And at the time everyone was pagan and they were, you know, they hadn't been Christianized yet. And so there were a lot of people practicing magic, primarily women. It was seen more as a woman's endeavor than a male endeavor. Um, but you had this crossover where, you know, men who sort of didn't fit the traditional mold of being a warrior or farmer found themselves moving over into the woman's sphere and practicing magic even at a potential, you know, um, I guess there would be a lot of pushback from society if they did that, but at the same time they got this sort of uh, access to this feminine power source that uh, other men weren't privy to, and so it created this interesting little subsect of uh, Viking society where you had women who traveled around selling their magical services and practicing magic that would alter fate. Um, and you know, predict when famines would end, and they would speak to the dead, and they do all these sort of you know what we think of as very stereotypical magical things. But at the time, that was considered to be a very real practice. And um, the fact that women would be able to cast aside their you know family bonds and marriage and go on the road and sell their services in this way, and that men would be able to chuck aside their sort of male obligations and follow them, I thought was quite interesting. And the fact that uh, they had the role models, of course, in Freya, who's the goddess who sort of introduces uh, the main types of magic to all the gods, but also Odin and Loki. There's plenty of other gods that um, are either sort of gender fluid or they exhibit a lot of just taboo pushing and breaking of boundaries. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to explore because we don't really think of the Vikings as being pushers of, you know, gender boundaries and pushers of social boundaries. And so um, I thought that was an interesting thing that wasn't really getting discussed. And I also thought it was interesting that because of that, there's a lot of history there that just isn't being discussed. A lot of queer history, a lot of um, feminine history, a lot of history of pagan magic that is sort of being swept under the rug in favor of just talking about um, brutality or, you know, the Vikings crusading around and taking over different places and pillaging and uh, even in most interpretations in the 20th century and beyond you see that's the focus and so I thought it'd be nice to maybe switch the conversation a little and um, yeah show people that they have a lot more in common with the Vikings than they might have thought.